Hey guys, welcome back. On today's episode, we are going to work on our admin dashboard. Currently, this page is very empty. We don't have any information or tables over here. So my goal for today is to add some widgets here, similar to what you will get on Filament or any other admin panel uh, that you have seen. Basically, add some widgets here and display some basic statistics, maybe total number of users, number of comments, or number of ideas. Obviously, we're going to make it customizable, so you can go ahead and display any information you want. So let's get right into it. Now I'm going to start off by first creating the widget HTML. So let's go ahead, open up our dashboard page and make sure you are selecting the admin dashboard. So I already have it open here. And under our H1 tag, which is basically the title, I'm going to go ahead and let's first create a div, which is going to be the container for all our widgets. And I'm going to go ahead and I'd give it a class of row. So since we are on Bootstrap, I'm basically going to go ahead and create a grid so we can make it responsive and then have, you know, multiple widgets inside of it. And then to contain a single widget, uh, we can go ahead and have another div inside of that row and give it, you know, some column size. Now in the Bootstrap, the class names are as follows. So for example, you can do column small for small screen size, medium MD for medium screen size, LG, and so on. So let's say small, we set it to six or yeah six and then uh, we can say call uh, md4 so if you are on medium size devices which i think my screen counts as medium i'm not sure maybe it's large we are going to have uh, three widgets and then if it's like on a smaller screen let's go ahead and have only two widgets okay and in bootstrap the columns add up to 12 so that's why uh, when we set this to four, we can have basically three columns of four spacing. Okay, so it adds up to 12. All right, now that we have this, let's go ahead and actually create our widget. Now, for this one, I'm just going to create a very basic widget, guys. This is not a design tutorial, but let's go ahead and start off by first creating a div. Now, Bootstrap comes with a card utility class. Uh, I think we can go ahead and start with that. So let's add a card. And all cards are also going to need a card body. So we need another div inside of card body. And I suppose if we are going to have a widget, we need a title. So let's add a title. I'll go with an H3 and uh, let's say title. And then under that, let's add a P tag with some data. So for now, I'll just put in, I don't know, 544, something like that. Okay. And let's just see how it looks. I will come back and customize this a little bit more. So it looks like this, I think is okay as a starting point. I think it would be nice to have an icon on the left side of the title. And I probably want this to be a bit larger and bold, okay? Actually, I think it'd be better if the data is larger than the title. So let's go ahead and make the changes. So I'll convert this into an F4. And let's go ahead and give some uh, styling to our P tag. So we can first of all make it bold in Bootstrap. The class for that is font weight bold or FW bold. And if you want to change the size, we can do FS, which is for like stands for font size two. So it would be this P tag would be the same size as an H2 tag. Although we can also go ahead and use an H2 tag here as well. Why not? Okay. And let's just double check, see how it looks. Now I think it looks slightly better. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and add an icon here as well. Now on this project, guys, we already have an icon installed. You can actually check that if you go ahead and take a look at our app layout. We are the kind of uh, we are importing Font Awesome. So the template I provided you guys already came with Font Awesome. As a matter of fact, you see this kind of brain here is a Font Awesome icon. So we can go ahead and actually use these. Okay. Now Font Awesome, if you guys haven't used it. Uh, Basically, it's very simple to add an icon. You can go ahead and add a span tag. And then inside this, you just needed to give it a class, okay? And the class structure usually follows something like this. For example, it's going to be FA for font awesome. And then your font style, which is going to be like solid or outline. So let's say S for solid. And I will show you guys exactly what this means in a second. And then followed by FA again, dash, and then the icon you want. So I already know some of them so i have to memorize let's say we do users so this is like one a common uh, icon you probably will see so let's see how it looks right now and as guys you see we are able to see the users so that's how uh, font awesome works here now one thing i don't like is 
that our title is also bold. So I think I'm going to go ahead and change this maybe to a P tag. I don't want it to be bold. Obviously, this is going to make it a lot smaller. So uh, let's go ahead and give it FS of 4. So it's the same size. FS4 will be same size as H4. And it looks slightly better. The icon could also be a bit smaller. Uh, I'll change that a bit in a second. But I think for now, we are uh, good to go, okay? So now that we have this, uh, let's go ahead and move this into its own kind of blade file so it's reusable. So right now, if you want to have multiple uh, widgets, you would have to basically copy-paste this. And I don't like that. It's obviously, if you want to change something, it's going to be a hassle. I would have to go ahead and change every single instance here. So right now, the design, I still don't like it that much. So I want to change it later on. So let's go ahead and first make it into a reusable component. Now, let's go ahead. We could put it inside our admin shirt. But since this is like a reusable component, I, we might want to use it on the user side as well. I will put it inside kind of the general shared folder we have over here. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's create a new file inside here. And I'm going to name it widget.blade.php. Just like so. And we can copy our widget template. And I'm going to only copy the card one. So don't copy the column stuff. Because it really doesn't kind of, it's not part of the widget itself. So I'm going to copy this or cut this and move it inside the widget just like so and now that we have that uh, we can go ahead and include it here so we can say include a shared widget and this should work let's do a reload and yeah, as you guys can see it looks exactly identical all right the next step for us is we actually need a way to pass in some data over to our widget because right now these are hard-coded values and that's actually very easy to do so uh, if you want to pass in some data into one of your includes, you can pass in a second argument. You can pass in an array as a second argument. And then inside this array, define a couple of variables or data. Okay. So for example, I can say title and set the title to, let's say, total users. Uh, we can go ahead and define an icon. Okay. And set this to... I'll copy the icon we have over here. Okay, FAS, FA users. Uh, we can go ahead and also define, maybe we can use data for the number. So let's do data and I'll set this to, let's say 12. Okay, so this is how you can pass in data into a blade file you have included. So now that I have done that, this will be accessible from inside here. So I can just go ahead and say title. And I forgot the quarterly bracket so let's do title and then for this one we can go ahead and say data and same thing for user uh, icon as well so i can come over here and say uh, icon and that should get the job done guys so now if we go back and we reload as you can see it is using the information i passed down from my dashboard page all right so now it's a bit more reusable now uh, we could also put in some uh, default options. So, if, for example, if I were to remove these, let me comment this out, we are probably going to get an exception here, okay? It's telling us icon is not defined. Now, in order to prevent that issue, in case you forget this, we can go ahead and define some default values. So, we can go ahead and use this kind of uh, null question mark, question mark, which is like a null operator. So, if icon is null or not defined, it will go ahead and use a default option you define on the right side. So, in this case, uh, I'll put the exact same, I guess, user icon. So we can say FAS, uh, FA user. Say for the title, if it's empty, I'll just put an empty string. And then for the data, we can set it to zero, okay? So if there are no data provided, uh, we will use zero as the default. And let's reload. Hopefully this fixes the issue, as you guys can see. Now it is indeed uh, working, okay? Very nice. So now that we have this, let's go ahead and define a few more uh, widgets and I'm going to copy it from the column. Okay, so let's make sure you're copying it from here. Uh, if you don't, I'll show you guys what happens. If I just paste this inside here, these are going to be stacked. Okay, and that's not what we want. So we want them to be in a grid. So I need to copy this column and then paste this here. And I'm going to place three of them here. So we have three widgets. And this is how it looks now. Okay. Uh, pretty nice. So for the first one, obviously, I wanted to show total users. For the next one, maybe we can show total ideas. So let's change this to ideas. And then uh, I will la later, guys, after we have the 
title and the icon set. I will go ahead and load these from our controller. For now, let's hard code these. So for the idea, let's see. Uh, we can actually go ahead and check out Font Awesome website for the icons. So uh, if you want to see all the available icons on Font Awesome, just Google Font Awesome. And it should be the first result that comes in, fontawesome.com. Let's go ahead and check out their website. I will, at the top, click on this icons tab. And now you should get a page like this and you can just search all the icons they have so let's search for idea and let's see what they have what they have now whoops my bad let me try again i'm not sure what i did there so uh, as you can see they have a lot of pro icons so i want to filter only the free icons obviously if you have bought the pro version you can use all of these but since we are using the free version i'm going to click on this free tab here and it actually they have quite a lot of good free options why not? Let's go ahead and use this uh, light bulb. So I'm going to go ahead and use FAS, FA, a light bulb. And let's see if it's working. It is. And one more thing I do like to show you guys. I, I mentioned that uh, when we had this FAS, this S stands for solid. Okay. There is another version. And if you'll take a look here, there is solid and then there is a regular so solid icons are kind of filled in. As you can see, the inside is filled, so it's solid. And then there is regular, which usually has, it's kind of empty inside, okay? So that's the difference. This is the solid version, and this is the regular version of an icon. Now, usually the regular versions are sometimes paid, so you may not always have the both versions available on the free uh, version of Font Awesome. So you do want to check this out, but right now, if you want to use the regular, we can go ahead and change this FAS to FAR for regular. And if I reload, as you can see, it turns into kind of, it's empty inside, okay? It's outlined. And I usually prefer regular icons over solid icons. And let's see if the users also has a regular version. It does not, okay? So it's probably a premium icon. I'm not sure. Let's search for users. And I think the regular version is paid. Probably, yes. So as you guys can see, this one is pro. Well, well, it's okay. So I guess we can go ahead and stick with uh, solid icons because I do like my icons to be consistent. So I don't want to, you know, mix regular and solid. And for comments, so for the last one, I want to show the total number of comments. So let's change it to total comments. And for the icon, let's see what they have. Comment. Okay, there is actually a comment icon. So let's change this to comment. Okay, pretty good. So now that we have these widgets, next step for us would be to load the data dynamically instead of hard coding them. And we can do that from our controller. So let me open up our dashboard controller and make sure you are selecting the admin version. So this is our admin dashboard control controller. And we can go ahead and just pass in all these uh, stats over here. So let's define the first one. I'm gonna define total users and we can do something like this let's say a user count and this will give us basically the number of users we have on the website let's do another one for ideas total ideas and it's going to use the idea model and then last one for the comment Okay, and we can then pass these down to our view file. I'm going to use compact here since that's what we have been using throughout the project. So total users, uh, total ideas, and uh, total uh, comments. All right, that's pretty much it, guys. Let me move this to a new line so it's easier to see on the video. And now that we have these passed down to our view file, we can actually use them inside our blade file. So let's put this over here. Then this one is going to be total ideas. And since we are using this uh, blade directive, we can just directly use them. So, and then over here, this is going to be total comments. All right, let's save this. So let's do a quick reload. And as you guys can see, now we are getting dynamic data from our database. And we can test this out. Let me go ahead and delete one of these comments. So let me delete this one. If I now go back to the dashboard, as you guys can see, this became three. 
So uh, that's the process, guys, if you want to add basic uh, widgets to your websites that you have made yourself. Of course, if you're using something like Filament, uh, I do have a video on that as well. Uh, you don't need to define or write the logic for this or the HTML for it. You just need to tell Filament how to fetch the data, basically what we did here. So it's a bit easier with Filament, but still, I think it's good for you guys to know how to build these on your own as well. So that's it, guys, for today's episode. I hope you learned something new. As always, if you have any questions, I'll leave them in the comment section below. I'll try to help you guys out if I know the answer. And like and subscribe to support the channel. And I see you guys on the next video. Have a great day. Bye.